sometimes you just want to get down to the dirt, into the early days of interactive movies, interactive narrative software. And when, when you, ha- you want to do that, probably the place you have to go is Windows 3.1, because you'll find more of that in the mud of Windows 3.1 than probably anywhere else. Windows 3.1, more like Windows 3.1. I hope I haven't made that joke before, because I thought that was pretty good. We're playing Quantum Gate, even though that's not what it says on the title screen. This is No One Dreams Here, but the name of the game is Quantum Gate. I'm not going to give you an answer why. It's beyond the understanding of us. Thank you to Slow Beef for bringing this game to my attention, because it's, it does seem like something that I would want to play. That's And we're playing it. That's what we're doing here. Look, it, we'll, we'll talk more about who made this in its background. Right now, we got to get into this. We have to go to movie. sweet guitar riffs herald the end of all things, or at least humanity, which is not all things, but it's all things to us. Opening. I hope this doesn't hurt. All new arrivals, please report to Bravo. Bravo. All new personnel to the briefing room in ten minutes. Oh, this must be my room. <laughs> it must be. This, it's a very promising start. Anyway, we're a member of the military, and I don't... We're in our room. We have to get to know the militerm. This is, the, like, the terminal. Terminal. Military terminal. So I just got that right now. I just understood it. There are icons around the screen. Uh, we can look at the news. The atrocities continue in Rangoon. Retaliatory acts continue to be committed in Rangoon against the members of the Green Death, the separatist faction responsible for the rebel uprising put down last year by the Rangoonese government held by UN and multi-corporate forces. A known subversive alleges that these acts are being committed with full approval of the UN. However, the Rangoonese president assures that Vagrant Eyes is responsible for the atrocities. Don't know if this is going to come up in the game. We just read this, though. So, bad news in Rangoon. What else do we got? Got any good news? Left-wing party targets UN for slander. Belgium's trans-progressionist party claims proof supporting earlier assertions that the United Nations was behind last year's assassinations of their party leader and several members of his family. UN Chief of Staff J. Douglas Bailey denies the UN's role in the Belgium incident, calling allegations patently absurd. I should mention, this game came out in 1993. At the time, there seemed to be this idea that in the future, the UN would become like this really powerful world government organization, as opposed to what it, what it is, which is like not really, it's not really pa- have any power at all, I, honestly. But people were kind of afraid at the time that the UN was basically going to become like the New World Order. So that if you think it's weird that the UN in this news article 
is uh like doing dastardly things like assassinating people and overthrowing governments as opposed to like any you know individual company companies well co- I should say companies because big corporations are big in the future as well big political actions as we will see but uh yeah it's kind of funny to look at that now Cat, oh, oh, here we go. Here's a good news article. Cat awarded medal for heroism. An industrious feline was awarded the Fruit Tree Medal of Heroism today by the Cherry Hill Town Council by stepping on a manual override button. The three year the three year old Siamese extinguished a fire, saving the lives of Ona Emma Cutbait and her four children. The three million plat country home, however, was burned almost to the ground. I don't know why we see like the article again. After we already read this. Gang steals tank. Attacks Century City, LA. An estimated 200 Los Angeles area gang members mounted an assault on the affluent Century City late Wednesday. The first such assault perpetrated against the sequestered wealthy. More than 70 gang members and 40 special police were killed in the skirmish. Several residents were injured and numbers on those raped or killed are not yet available. At least 90 residents are listed as missing. Hmm. Well, the rich having to sequester themselves against uh, angry forces of the poor, then, you know, hey, give it time. Let's give that a little bit more time. You know, maybe work stoppage paralyzes Chinese government. Chinese laborers called yesterday for a general strike effective immediately. Cargo ships docked in ports have been left unloaded, and the ensuing backup has paralyzed the shipping lanes. Chinese officials are denying all allegations of aggressive response, refuting charges that soldiers are beating and arresting protesting workers. Unconfirmed reports of indiscriminate gunfire into crowds of protesters and bystanders have been made. Chinese government launches violent reprisals. Against who? Reports indicate that outbreaks of violence are taking place in China. At least 200 are uh, dead and 600 injured following clashes between the military and striking laborers. Independent claims state that soldiers have opened fire without provocation on peaceful protesters, contradicting official statements that the violence was begun by rioting laborers. Big violence between the Chinese government and the laborers who are trying to fight for, I guess, additional rights. It was not... I didn't get... Too much into detail there. Chinese government should step down. Like the entire Chinese government. Just do it already. Since the closing of her borders in 2039, Communist Party Chairman Ho Chun Li has blatantly refused any efforts by the outside world to establish meaningful communications with China. Though he cites a lack of understanding by the outside world as reasons for China's silence, those of us who have landed within her borders at that time have no doubt as to his reasons. Well, what are the reasons? I don't know if this article is going to say. Sony Tooney launched Great Battles series. A crowd of 120,000 delivered a 12-minute standing ovation at the premiere of The Battle of the Bulge, the first installment of Great Battles, a collaborative effort from Sony's Virtual History Division and Roy Tooney Productions. The technology and choreography of the reenactment was nearly flawless at the opening Friday night at the Barclay Dome. I, w- I want to see this collaboration. Why can't I see this? Oh. Environmental groups march on UN. An estimated 500, it's not that many, environmentalists staged a protest march in front of the United Nations building today, shouting claims of growing discontent over deteriorating environmental conditions. SWAT teams were called in, and although a few isolated episodes of violence were reported, New York police reported no reported less than 50 arrests and no deaths or serious injuries. So... The environment, going to be a thing in this story. Hyperbole secedes, forms God's country. Setting her mind to success, Leslie Roach has managed to set a precedent for other corporate entities with independence on their mind. In a bold move, Hyperbole Studios has seceded from the United States to form its own nation. Hyperbole Studios, by the way, the developers of this game in the future, they're not around anymore, so... Hey, think big, right? They they didn't make it. They didn't make it. Chronic water deprivation syndrome is deadly. The United Nations Medical Association has listed chronic water deprivation syndrome as the number one killer in the world. The UNMA has linked the condition to worldwide drought conditions and the arid global atmosphere experience over the last five years. An estimated 250 million are suffered from CWDS worldwide and is believed that 5 million have died from the syndrome to date. I guess, yeah, lack of water, it's going to kill you. 
Out of business, the last picture show. The Plano Bijou, the last motion picture theater, the last motion picture theater in America has closed its doors. A crowd estimated at a half million gathered to say goodbye as clips from the many films shown at Plano Bijou in the last hundred years were projected as holographic images on the Texas sky. Though movie theaters have been virtually extinct in the U.S. for the last 20 years, the Plano Bijou was the last of a handful of holdouts. Doesn't this game take place in like the year 2500? I mean, theaters... No, no, it was 2050. 20, 20, yeah, 2050. Yeah, okay. That's... I think they'll die out earlier than that. But that's it's not a bad prediction, especially since streaming was not around when the game when this game was made. Full Metal Lifestyle suits Patrick Stallone. Full Metal Fist 3, the third in Interactor Patrick Stallone's blockbuster series, is setting download records during its first week of release. More than 300 million plats in downloads were recorded during its first weekend. The total box office take is not in yet. Stallone never sought stardom, but embraces his celebrity with boyish charm. So, people are still watching movies, it's just not at the theater. They're downloading it. How bizarrely futuristic heartland fires continue to burn the largest brush forest fire in world's history has left millions dead injured or homeless while destroying thousands of acres of the midwest officials fear many towns which may have perished in toto will be discovered only in the aftermath of the blaze exact numbers are of identification of the dead are unavailable though property damage in excess of 500 billion plats have been reported i assume plat is a unit of money I, I assume that. Advertisement for the Virtual Vacation. Dream Arts Incorporated's new Virtual Vacation series promises you the adventure of a lifetime. Or two. So this just seems like Total Recall is what it's advertising. Like, we, you know, we've, we've seen that movie. And I think that's everything in the news... Let's see, how do we get back? Okay, we click on the icons. Okay, what's this icon? Rules and regulations, let's see. So th this is, you know, drier stuff. The, these are the rules that we have to adhere to as part of the military. I do not know how much of this is actually going... I, probably nothing, probably not much of this is actually going to have to do with the game's actual story. But this actually m probably is relevant. I think so. Laser X4444 plasma rifle. You can see the different parts of it. The low frequency radar mate. TM, targeting wand, the childproof orange safety ring, how thoughtful, slimline battery emulates traditional grip design, wireless comm link to 840 AV, single stage plasma chamber, safer, oh, specifications, what else do we have, well we have this helmet, VR technology from Pacific Image Data, bringing movie style know-how to the battlefield. Uh, uh, so, this is a VR helmet. That's what they look like. It's got the DRP-1000 Retinal Fire TM laser imaging and tracking system, cerebral cortex direct transmission slash reception coil, the PID Sir A10 Master Voice TM speech recognition module, the battle phone communication hardware. So, this is not just a VR headset. This is a uh, this is meant for warfare. It's meant for soldiers to wear. Look at this resolution: thirty two hundred by thirty two hundred by sixty four bits, stereoscopic. Impressive. And the full suit right here. The co-atmospheric at, uh, augmentation suit. You got your virtual reality top hat. They call it. You got the full laser. Combat Boot TM, Shock Offset Footwear, ISO Recycler, Waste Processing Circuitry. I assume that means you can just go to the bathroom in your suit. I assume that's what that means. VR Error Addressing. Under some circumstances, it may be possible for the VR display transmitted to the user to be less than completely accurate. 
This condition could be caused by any number of events, but regardless of causality, it is critically important that the user continue with the task at hand. This will allow the VR to establish the perceptual baselines needed to reproject reality data. After a brief period, normal projection will return. Fixating on display anomalies can prolong the time needed for proper projection can to begin. It is believed that most VR display malfunctions originate in the deep centers of medullar memory. As such, their content should be completely ignored. Okay, so sometimes the VR headset might show you things that's wrong and is not accurate. Don't necessarily trust the things that the VR helmet is going to show you. <laughs> that's, quite a, that's quite a drawback, I would think. Heraldry. I hear different symbols. Bug types. Okay, so we're at we're on the pl we're I think we're around the planet AJ three nine oh five. Uh, we have insects that live here, and they're dangerous. I mean, they're big bugs, and it's a video game. So hey, I mean, we have to shoot them, right? It's what we do. I like these wireframes. It's like it's giving us no information at all, but it's cool. Maps. Okay, so this is the station that we're on. A little, a little reminiscent of Sentient, but the maps are much simpler. They're just circles with five rooms. Level one. Level two. And level three. So it shouldn't be that hard to find our way around. I have one letter one letter waiting. Let's check our email. Hi, Drew, sweetie. It's me. I hope you're well. Uh, it's funny to be talking to you like this. I hope you know what you're doing. We're all well here. Um... Betsy and Jojo say hi. They have a friend who's stationed at Fort Bragg. It's funny to be talking like this. Where's he stationed, stuff like that? Never thought I'd end up a military mom. Damn it, Drew, I can't believe you just ran off and joined the goddamned army. I'm sorry. I swore I wouldn't swear. It's your life, and I just love you, son, and I hope you're all right. Oh, I have a rally tomorrow. It's going well. I, at least I think it is, anyway. Hard to tell what's really going on these days. You know how these men at the UN and Congress are. They'll tell you anything to your face and then turn right around. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, how is it there? The other night, your Aunt Jane and I downloaded that new Patrick Stallone movie where he's in the army. We couldn't figure out the goddamn interface that had all these stupid switches. Anyway, it was all so rough. Do you really fight like that in the army? I hope you don't fight like it was in that movie because that's all they did was fight. Oh, fiddle, I'm out of time. All right, um, real quick. I saw Jenny yesterday, and she's doing good. Um, she said she was going to call you soon, so um, I thought maybe I better warn you. <sighs> anyway, son, I love you. Well, apparently we left to join the military quite abruptly. And Mom was not happy about it. Also, Jenny might try to call us. Is that a bad thing? Maybe we'll find out. Okay, there we go. Just trying to find an icon that would do something. All right, we could just delete that, I guess. Sure, <laughs> we'll just delete that. There we go. Now with inbox empty, inbox zero. That's the goal, right? Now, we have no TV on AJ3905. 
Just read a book or something. All right, sure. Or why not play a delightful bit of interactive narrative like Quantum Gate? You want to listen to some MIDI? Got a selection of MIDIs to choose from. I can think of darker drums than this. There's something like different genres we can pick from. This was the intro music, I believe. What's the garbage man? Oh man, the garbage man is intense. You know, when you hear this music, it means it's time to take out the trash. What about what's classical in this world? What about the masters? Kind of a weird thing about things like this. There's like a lot of content in this Militarum terminal. You don't, I don't think you have to do any of this. You can just go off and start playing the game. And it's not like you can have the MIDI playing like while you're playing the game. If you want to listen to the MIDI, you could just, you just have to sit here at the terminal listening to it. And you could just, like, play the MIDI files in Windows if you wanted. Tell me about Sweet Shadows. Okay, what's about what's postmodern? I want to know. What about gourmet choice? And there's some choices made with the instruments here. What about uh, I've got you to grab onto? Some percussion. What about missing you? I don't think this is a MIDI. I think this is digital. Well, we could just listen to this music all day, I know, but let's see what this last icon is. It's a, a number of options, but we do not have administrative access to Spectra Stone TM. Maybe we'll find out what Spectra Stone is at some point, but we don't have administrative access, unfortunately. So, okay, that's the terminal. 
Like, I guess the only real story-related thing was looking at the email from our mom. We didn't really have to do any of the rest of that. We could look around our room. Remember, we're, like, in the military. And this is uh, our bunk. That was a nice nap. General orientation will begin in five minutes. All new arrivals to the first floor briefing room for orientation in five minutes. That should be us. Where's the orientation room? We could check the map, I suppose, but we could also look at this. Dark Harvest by Paul Hyomit, maybe? It had a certain depth. I'm not sure how deep it got because I closed my eyes during the scary parts. Bob Barker. I mean, I would be honored if Bob Barker would do a quote for my book. I always respected his writing as the rare art form that it is. About as rare as a good steak. Bloody. A little warm in the middle, but mostly red. The Humane Society. Just the Humane Society in general. I didn't know you could do that with a crowbar, says Bob Robertson of Popular Mechanics. Some pretty good quotes. The Madness of Roland, a novel written by the director of this game. I don't know. I, apparently, this was something he released before this game. I don't know. actually know what it is, but maybe we'll check it out at some point. Journal. Journal? Journal? Uh... Oh, here we go. I'm already so desperate for a friend that I find myself practicing an ancient and lost art, not out of necessity so much as instinct. Is that the right word for it? I can't describe it, but I feel compelled to keep my true thoughts, those innermost and pristine, away from the probing of electronic fingers. So I've begun this journal, this diary, if you will, in the most primitive and least accessible way I can find, writing pen to paper. If any of my platoon were to discover this oddity, my penchant for antiquated forms of self-expression, I would surely be branded more of a freak than I already am. Not that I care. We've had little opportunity to see the planet as the quantum gate we came through put us right into this building, which I believe is the only base. And here, there are only some scale maps, providing a glimpse of the most foreboding orange, red, and yellow landscape and cross-sections of an atmosphere. The color of Red mold. The gate has left me feeling queasy and vaguely unwell. It occurs to me here, now, that there is nothing intrinsically romantic about the army. The romance, like that found in my Hemingway discs from college, is in the doing of the war, the battle, the struggle of life and death. I have a clear picture of the enemy, these hideous bugs, from training, and it's easy to project my problems onto them. I look strangely forward to the killing, I, who had dedicated myself so recently to healing. But of course, they are not human. Intelligent, yes, but from what we have learned, their behavior is decidedly subhuman. So for now, there is work. Some drills and waiting. Long, painful waiting. Jenny is constantly in my thoughts. I had a dream about her earlier today. I dreamt her the way I'd like to remember her. Well, I like how self-aware he is. He's like, I, I look forward to the killing. That's wrong, right? Like, I'm projecting my problems on the enemy, and I want to kill them to solve my problems. It's like he is coming to, like, a self-realization that you'd think he would be coming to at the end of the game. But no, it's, like, right here at the beginning. Uh, let's see. Can we put it down? He's also a very dramatic writer. Uh, can I... There we go. Can I look at this desk? I don't think I can. Doesn't seem like it. So we can just start walking, I think. Orientation is about to begin. All new arrivals, please report to the first floor briefing room. No, we're late, so it's just, it's just gonna make me go. Look, we're a military man. We're gonna be there on time. We're disciplined. So I guess that scream we did at the beginning, that was us going through the quantum gate, which apparently was an incredibly painful experience. 
Apparently. <laughs> I mean, Sentient never did this for me. Sentient never, like, just made me walk to where I needed to go next. And here we are. This is a conference room. Here are our, our buddies in arms. Let's have a seat. Drew, there's been an accident. Jenny, Angel, my Angel, don't leave me. Please, don't ever leave me. I can't be with you. Yes, yes, I will. Griffin! Might I suggest you confine your sleeping activities to your off-duty hours? Is this a Neil Breen movie? <laughs> what a jerk. <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Now then. Assuming that we can proceed without any further disturbance to Mr. Griffin, might I point out that we are here under the auspices of the United Nations Global Emergency Order 3109. Our mission here is of the highest priority and is top secret. The policy shack at the UN has instructed me to protect the status of this mission with extreme prejudice. All aspects of this operation are being governed by the International Indentured Forces Act. Jesus. They really own us now. I look at the proportions on those guys. They're covered now. Pleasantness in Rangoon. Now then, this is Dr. Elizabeth Marks. She's the UN's lead side deck. Dr. Marks. Thank you, Colonel. I'm sure it will come as no surprise. Hey, look at them. To any of you here? What's going on there? The Earth is on the verge of environmental Armageddon. You been watching ICNN, huh, Doc? That'll be quite enough out of you, Michaels. Actually, soldier, ICNN's coverage leaves a bit to be desired. The situation is much worse than any of you have been led to believe. My God, they've been lying to us. The Environmental Emergency Management Office estimates that irreversible cellular death of the Earth's ecosphere will begin in less than five years. Dave. Yes, Dr. Marks. <laughs> Roll the clip, please. Yes, Dr. Marks. He must media lab put this together. Pay close attention. Clouds hid the sun, and the hand of man withered on its rod. The beasts of the fields fell into pits and holes, and the smoke from all the world's burning made our eyes water. The inability of the world's industrial nations to reach a unified solution to environmental management over the past five decades has finally borne bitter fruit. Emo's massively neural supercomputer has, after four and a half years of intense computation on the World 5 simulation model, projected 2062 as the year when the Earth's environmental decline can no longer be reversed. World 5 predicts that all human life will be extinguished by 2084. World 5 further predicts that no viable solution can be reached within the existing framework. Did the AI edit this video together? Into Dr. Elizabeth Marks and Dr. Lee Van Parsley. While at Beatrice's Particle Accelerator Laboratory, Dr. Marks created a quantum gate, <laughs> a device that was capable of reaching into the parallel reality frequencies that surround our own. However, the device's gargantuan energy requirements and the huge amounts of toxic waste produced rendered it Dr. Rampajny is best known for his work with iridium oxide, perfecting fusion washing, <laughs> a technique that produces huge amounts of oxygen, water, and ozone. <laughs> iridium oxide's extreme rarity rendered this promising new technique nothing more than a laboratory novelty. One day, fate would intervene, 
and bring these two world-class scientists directly into each other's path. While trolling quantum locations, Dr. Marx discovered planet AJ3905, a medium-sized Class A planet with huge reserves <laughs> of iridium oxide. The Eden Project was born. <laughs> world initiative, utilizing the joint resources of many multinational entities, both governmental and corporate. The goal of the Eden Initiative is to increase the time available to Earth before the irreversible death of the Gaia entity, allowing Earth's leaders time to find a viable solution to the present circumstance. This will be accomplished in two phases. First, the creation of a mining outpost on planet AJ3905, and second, the construction of multiple high-capacity fusion scrubber sites around the globe. Iridium oxide will be harvested on AJ3905. Why is it sideways? ...through the gate and processed on Earth. Let the sweet waters go forth, nourishing beasts and men. Jesus, this is big. My God. We've really done it, haven't we? He sounds so emotional. As you can see, this couldn't be more important. I guess not. Jeez. Why is there such a difference Literally. in the acting between our main character and, like, the person on screen? We've really screwed this up. Like, she's actually trying to act. She's really upset. You know, and our character clearly is not. Most of the world's top scientists signed an open letter to humanity saying that we felt that without significant effort the, the Earth's ability to support life would be severely jeopardized. The world governments ignored our warnings and now they're asking me... Dr. Marx. Let's stick to the subject at hand. That was weird. <laughs> I suppose Dr. Marx was struck with the responsibility of our mission. Now on to some specifics. All the lead officers here are regular UN, as are the Cytex and the technical contractors. The first group of coalition forces has been the EC 3rd Airborne Division. Our latest addition has been Beatrice's 23rd Armored Infantry. And I've just received information that the next why day opening... They, why are they going to a second... Elite guard. A second video yes, of them. <laughs> So as you can see, the entire international community is lending the UN its full support. Now then, are there any questions? <laughs> hey, gameplay! I can ask a question, such as why... <laughs> Why is there a large force here? Why is the mission top secret? When will Eden be completed? Um, well, why, tell me about the secret mission. Why, why does this have to be secret? So why is this mission top secret? The UN is very concerned about creating a global panic. Obviously, nothing can be gained from that kind of chaos. But rest assured, all national and corporate forces have been advised of this situation. Yes, soldier. What's for lunch? I believe it's bratwurst, Private Michaels. <laughs> Lieutenant Andrews, will you finish up here? If you'll all be patient, while we are tech over to the Training and Simulation Center, Sergeant Cranshaw will go over a few salient technical concerns. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I only got to ask one question. taking a look at all battlefield and VR procedures. So pay close attention because this stuff is mission critical. Why, why are there cheetahs behind her? The atmosphere on AJ3905 is a combination of chlorine and lithium dioxide. 
so it'll eat your brain while it eats your face. We're going to be using standard CO atmosphere suits, but they're being fitted with... Just CO suits? That's bullshit! Why don't we get some augmentation? COs have no armor value at all. Michaels, why don't you just shut up? Sorry, Michaels, you're right. But I don't have the answer. Well, why don't you find out, Sarge? Yeah? And maybe you should shut your word hole. <laughs> right on, Sergeant. I have made inquiries, Private Michaels, because it is important for me to keep my boys happy and healthy so that when they return from the battlefield, they can service me in the fashion to which I've grown accustomed. But my superiors in the UN have informed me that Beatrice's 23rd armor does not call the shots around here. The CO suits, inadequate as they may be, have been retroed with the latest VR augmentation top hats, absolutely state-of-the-art. Complete heads up. Computerized targeting and ranging. Complete window in the window top down of the combat zone. Cerebral cortex transmission coils, so the response time is very good. Oh, Jesus, we use those helmets in Belgium. They suck. I had a migraine for a week. Mr. Michaels, are you an expert on freaking everything? Yeah, pretty much. I guess I am, Sarge. I really find that very hard to believe. Mr. Griffin, do you think Mr. Michaels here is an expert on freaking everything? I don't want to get dragged into this, Sarge. I'm just wondering why there are cheetahs behind you. Is that a side effect of the quantum gate? Am I seeing just backgrounds behind people? Like, that other guy has, like, blue lightning behind him. I don't know what's happening there. Um... No, Sarge, I think you know everything. I mean, these are these are both kind of sassy. No, Sarge, I thought that was you. No, Sergeant, I thought that was you. That's correct. I do know freaking everything. For instance, I know that you and Private Michaels here for the rest of the week are going to be pulling KP duty. KP? Damn, just like in the movies. <laughs> well, both of these are kind of whiny. Uh... Come on, Sarge. I didn't do anything. Oh, come on, Sarge. I didn't do anything. Don't whine, soldier. It's very unbecoming. Exposure to the atmosphere of 3905 is extremely hazardous. The docs say it's profoundly damaging. The effects are violent, painful, difficult to treat, and irreversible. Any breach of the CO suit would prove catastrophic. So ladies, let's not get a run in our stockings. Yeah, which is why we need something a little warmer on than just CO suit. Man, will you give it a rest? Why don't you go flatline? Michaels, don't piss me off. We're through with that one. The VR in the top hats is keyed into brainwave and retinal activity, so it's the next best thing to be in there. Targeting is handled automatically. Just look and lock. So everybody step up to the simulator bay. The convention for the simulator is that the arrow keys will move you around the battlefield, which is an exact replica of the island. The mouse takes care of targeting and firing. So everybody step up and strap one on. You're all networked, so the highest score gets an extra free period this week. All right, we got to strap it on. It's time for VR. VR display systems initializing. Oh man, the dialogue in this is... Oh, and it's time for gameplay. Like, you wonder if there's going to be gameplay in this? Here we go. Gameplay. It's VR. So the sim we're in the simulator. We got to shoot the bugs. I think that sound is the bugs. T one seven. Yeah, that's like a bug screaming, I th I think. So I guess this is what we're going to be doing when we go out onto the surface of the planet. We're going to be hunting down bugs. Got to shoot them. Because they're getting in our way. Fire. But... Michaels, I think was his name, was very concerned that the suits were gonna be were gonna be wearing. Friend in trouble. Oh, who's in trouble? 
Jackson? Oh, he's like up there. I mean, like, he should get out of the way. There's a lot of bugs. Hmm? Oh, big bug. Yeah, Michaels did not think that the suits we were gonna get were gonna give us appropriate protection, and I died. Oh well. I guess we could do it again if we wanted to. Alright, and we are... Yeah, we are back. Beck, what's gotten in you? I don't know who I am anymore. We have a job. A very important job. A job our futures depend on. How do you know what we're doing is right? Beck, we've been through this before. What do you want to do? Drag 12 million people through the... Dismissed, soldier. Oh, looks like I witnessed something I was not supposed to witness. The doctor is very upset about what we have to do. We're in the hangar. Um, oh, we can, like, look at the map, right? Let's see. Which one was the... That's news? We don't need that. Uh, maps. So let's see, briefing simulation. So we should be on level one. There's, yeah, there's the hangar, security, gate control, main entry. So level two, corporate quarters, science, kitchen mess, lounge, sick bay. Central processing, Saunders, officer mess, UN quarters, marks. Uh, level three seems pretty important. Why don't we see if we can look around? Uh... There we go. So we're, this is like a circular pattern. So oh, and I wanted to go to the elevator. Let's give it a try. I like how there's this like nice statue, piece of artwork. Everyone can appreciate in the elevator. Oh, there are books here? Oh, no, those are the books we already saw? Wait, why? We're back in our, our room? Why would the elevator just take us right the... I, I don't know how I got there. I'm confused about how I got there. Right, let's take a look at some other rooms. There's Private Lopez. Private Whalen. Private Hawkins. I guess we can't do anything there. Privates Griffin and Michaels report immediately to the kitchen for KP duty. Griffin and Michaels to the kitchen immediately. Uh, that's true. We, uh, we were told that we're on KP duty. Let's take a look at the map. Are we on level two? Well, that's where kitchen... No, kitchen is there. We went up to level three. Officer mess, okay. So we are on level three. I was a bit confused about that because... We ended up in our own quarters. I don't understand that, but... Let's go to level... Level two. I'm not really sure how we ended up in our own room. Let's have a look for that kitchen. Privates Griffin and Michaels report immediately to the kitchen for KP duty. I know. Griffin and Michaels to the kitchen immediately. I heard. Oh, 
That's mess hall. Um, let's say, should I go into the mess hall or is the kitchen next to that? Kitchen mess. So I guess I guess we're here. Right, boys. Let's get going. You have KP is still KP. You have giant crackers behind you. What KP stands for. Why am I? Why, why am I seeing these backgrounds? Uh, does it stand for keep peeling? Keep peeling. That is correct. You're a smart man. That machine here, which you two will have the honor of cleaning. Can prepare a full meal for over a hundred men in less than an hour. Do you believe that? No. No. Me neither. When I was on TV, did you know I was on TV? No. Nope. Me neither. <laughs> no, no, I will. I was on TV. I had my own TV show. I was a star. I was. Do you believe that? Um, well, yeah, yeah, sure. I was. I was the star. Interactive Channel 37. Four and a half years I was on that damn show. It was great. I loved it. I had a lot of fans. Lots of cars, booze, house in the Bahamas. A lot of women fans. I just love the way you flip great. You believe that? No. Hey. Watch it. All right, boys. Clean her up good. This game makes me feel like there's something wrong with me. What's that? Hey, man, can I talk to you? Uh, well, I mean, we're here together. There's no one else to talk to, so sure, what's going on? Yeah, sure, what's up? I don't know what's going on around here, but this stuff they're shoveling ain't going down with just one swallow. Well, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? All this BS about the mining operation. You have any idea how much of this stuff it takes to have any effect on the atmosphere? I don't actually, um, but that's not an option. Oh no, it is the first one. Look, I I don't know much about it. Look, I don't know much about it. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out. I was talking to a mechanic yesterday. There's only one mechanic here. In the whole damn motor pool, there's only one mechanic. They're gonna dig up enough of this ore to affect the entire planet, and there's only one mechanic here. Come on! Some bogus sci-fi cheese fest, maybe, but come on, man, this is reality, and there is no way they're gonna dig up enough rock to make this scheme of theirs work. Uh, well, maybe there's, like, a bigger group coming. Like, maybe we're just, like, the vanguard, and, like, there's gonna be more people coming, maybe. Yeah, well, look, maybe there's a bigger group coming through on the next gate. True, man, you're cute, but you're not too bright. I got some San Francisco cliff face I'd like to sell you. Of course there's a bigger group coming through in the next gate. All right, never mind, listen. What about this? What about the VR displays they're using? I've used those cerebral cortex coils before. That is scary shit, man. When I was in Belgium, I don't know. I could swear the VR was not accurate. I still don't know what the hell I was shooting at. And they give you a drug. <laughs> Addiction is a very real threat. Man, Jesus, listen to you. You sound paranoid. There's no drug. All right, man, whatever. A couple days, you'll stop dreaming. <laughs> then you'll believe me. Hmm. Well, that one text file we read 
did say that the VR is not always accurate. I did say that. Oh, am I controlling again? I guess we're done with KP. Oh, there's some people there. What's going on? Quantum. Just looking at her hurts. Well, you're obviously in a lot of pain, though. So what are you going to do? Well, my throat has really been hurting lately. Oh, it has, has. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty bad, too. Well, maybe you ought to go and see the doctor. You know, that is a great idea. I'm going to do just that right now. Thank you. <laughs> Did that guy have a faux hawk in 1993? That seems a bit early for that. Can I look at whatever? The, no, I, I don't think I can look at that. I guess I can't click on that. Uh, is there like a person here? Hi. Welcome to the Met Hall. That's an artificial Metro person. Is fried bratwurst and a nacho cheese shot. All right, they were right. Bratwurst is lunch for today. I like how it's spinning. Bratwurst and nacho cheese? Does that go together? All right. Hello. Oh, it's the doc. Andrew, have you been smoking? Oh, what? She's in a bad way. What do I say to somebody like her? She's in a bad way. Well, like we used, I guess we used to smoke, so we know that if you smoke, you must have some serious problems. Let's just, uh, you know, let's just try to strike up some conversation. Maybe she can give us some information. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Fine. What is her problem? Not in the mood for conversation. Uh, I guess we can probably just leave this. Leave the mess, I suppose. That guy said that they would be giving us drugs when we use the VR. And that we would stop dreaming when they gave us the drugs. So I guess that's something to keep in mind. Alright, I guess let's, uh... We're not told to go anywhere right now, I don't think. So let's just explore. Uh, her mother was a rantle. What? She must be Dr. Marx's assistant. Oh. Put them on the desk there. Thank you. What's she talking about? I beg your pardon? Put them on the desk. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what you're talking about. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were. I'm sorry. May I help you? It's, it makes me think she's like a sentient NPC just wants me to get her some files why are we like seeing other people on earth like on occasion sometimes when we talk to people are we like having like weird flashbacks is this the science lab is this the science lab what what are you talking about you are not allowed to be in here you need to leave before i call security all right calm down <laughs> she's a little uptight she seemed pretty calm, actually. I mean, maybe we're not allowed in here. That could be true. Enlisted quarters. Let's check this out. Like, this is where we should be, I think. I'm still confused about taking the elevator up to the third floor and coming out in our room. Yeah, this is this is where we were. I'm still I don't know how that happened. I think we're just back in our room. Yeah, this is it. Keep ending up back here. Take a look at these other doors, though. Well, probably we can't do anything. Private Castle. Yeah, there he is, Private Michaels. Wondering where his was. Ah! 
sick bay. Is anyone sick right now? All right, soldier. You may put on a robe. They're in the alcove. Oof. Damn. Maybe I should mention I was a medical student. Um, you want me to take my clothes off? Yes. Is there a problem? Uh, well, no. No, it's, it's just right here. No, soldier, you may use the examining room. Oh, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> what a hayseed. Of course. Privacy, bay two. Oh, gosh, the doctor wants me to take my clothes off. Uh, Griffin, Andrew Griffin. Marie, status on Griffin. He needs to be looked at. Do you have that entire list memorized? There are only 12 of them. It ain't brain surgery. Good thing for you. Get a robe. Actually, seeing the hair now, I can tell it's not a faux hawk. It's just kind of looked like that from the side. I hate that, Drew, and I hate that game, and I hate the fact that you watch it. The whole thing was bad enough before, but now they added all of these new rules. It's pathetic, and you know what makes it more pathetic? Is all of these people are starting to flog to it. Jesus, Jenny, calm down. It's just a game. This is not a game. Damn it, that's my point. You know what I did on my ship last night? I helped the doctor put 17 staples into a six-year-old skull. Do you know what? Do you know what happened? His 14-year-old brother hit him with a football stick. We're learning how to be doctors, Drew. You and I are learning how to see. But we live in a society built on violence. Did she say a football stick? Hmm, that color looks nice on you. Thanks. So, I thought it kind of washed me out. That must be a Jensen Ultra. That's very nice. Huh? Uh... Bedside manner can be very important. Uh -huh. Well, I don't see any redness or uh -huh. feel any swelling. There's nothing wrong with that guy. He's not sick. How long has it been bothering you? A what? I said, how long has it been bothering you? Uh, a, a couple of days. Uh -huh. What's your first name? Doctor. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Way to go. She probably has to put up with that all the time. Listen, I, I just can't see anything. Is it really bad? Yeah, it, it's kind of bad. Oh. Yeah, I hear you're from San Diego. You do, do you? Yeah. And where are you from? Tucson. Mmm. Any other symptoms? No. No, just the throat. Ears bothering you? Mmm. No. I have an aunt in San Diego. Oh, you do, do you? Yeah. Well. I think that we should get together sometime and you can tell me all about that. Really? Oh, I, I'd like that. I bet. Marie, would you come in here for a moment, please? Listen, about your sore throat. Oh, it, it feels better already. I am sure it does, but just to be safe. Marie, 500 units of B12, please. I uh, think you're going to need a shot. Oh, man, not, not, not a shot. Yeah. Uh, what is the background in that one? Sorry, but I think you're going to need a shot. It's just like, ring a really it's just like fleshy. Shot. Oh. Bend over, Buttercup. Privacy, Bay 3. Hi, I'm Dr. Mirren. Griffin, right? Yes. How do you feel, Andrew? Confused? I mean, I, I understand that a bedside manner is important, but you know what's not important is a coherent narrative. I feel fine. I feel fine. Good. It's just common practice for me to check on all the new rivals, make sure everything's okay. Sometimes Regate can make you feel a little woozy for a couple of days, so just to be sure, I'm going to give you a really big shot. Oh, not a shot. No, just kidding, but I am going to do a quick scan. Okay, okay, you're all done. Was that a Jensen Ultra? Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? You were in med school, weren't you? Yeah. You want to be a neurosurgeon? 
third year. UT, right? Yeah. Oh, it's a good school. Now how'd she know that? I guess she looked at my file. A little lunch will probably make you feel a whole lot better. It's just a lag. Listen, if you don't feel better by this afternoon, come see me again. <laughs> All right, don't need to be in there. Were we sick? Like, I just walked in there and we got, we were examined and I, I don't, I don't think we were sick, but we met the doctor and we, I, I guess we made a friend because we were in medical schools. Lights out. Lights out, Phoenix Company. I hope you all get a good night's sleep. There's something that kills me about how the AI has the label artificial person on them. Just that I, something about that really gets me. Uh, enlisted. Well, this is not the quarters, but it's the lounge. Anyone in the lounge? Uh, maybe not, because it is lights out. This is empty. The lounge seems nice. Time for lights out. Lights out, Phoenix Company. I hope you all get a good night's sleep. How can I sleep when I'm so excited about killing bugs? Right, that should be... Our quarter should be coming up. Here we go. Time for lights out. I know, artificial person. I hope you all get a good night's sleep. I, I know, I hear you. I'm right here. Oh, I think now it's just automatically making me go. It just does that if you spend too much time. Time for bed. It's been a great first day. We have a dream sequence. I hope we have a dream sequence. Yes. Is at stake here. Exposure to the atmosphere of 3905. All aspects of this operation are being governed by the International Indentured Forces Act. To give you a drug, couple days you'll stop dreaming. Couple days you'll stop. Couple day a drug. Good morning, Private Griffin. Please wake up. Wake up, Private Griffin. Please report to the mess hall for breakfast. Do we... I wonder if we have any new emails or anything. Oh, yeah, we do. Okay. One letter. Hi, it's me. Listen, I'm sorry about my letter to you yesterday. I didn't mean to upset you like that. They tell you that you're supposed to know what you're going to say before you start recording, but I swear no matter how hard I try, I just can't seem to do that. It all makes sense before I start, and I don't remember. So, anyway, I'm sorry about yesterday. It was your father's birthday, or it would have been, and I was just upset about that. He's gone, Andrew. He would have been so proud of you, Drew. Please come home to me safe and sound. You're all I have left. Your father's gone. Your sister's working for that damn lab. Please. I need for you to come home to me. The other day I was watching the news and there was this uh, explosion. Oh, we're being censored. 
Under the authority, the Office of Communication Management is sorry to inform you that under the authority of the Indentured Forces Act, we found it necessary to edit this letter. We apologize for the necessity, but the correspondence was found to contain either inflammatory confidential secret or otherwise jeopardizing information. Should you feel this letter was censored erroneously, you may file a formal protest with the Office of Communication Management. Hmm. Uh, what do we know about our, our guy here? So, Mom is concerned about us. Dad's dead, and uh, I think her name was Jenna. Something happened. We don't know what, but she might be trying to communicate with us, and we know she hates football, the kind of football they play with sticks. Doesn't like them. And something about an explosion was censored. Uh, they said go to the mess hall. Please report to the mess hall for breakfast. There we go. Please report so, to the mess hall for breakfast. So is that machine actually able to make meals for 100 people? Let's find out. Doesn't seem like there's 100 people on this station, but... Welcome to the mess hall. What's for breakfast? The 24-hour special is... PB&J with a crust cut off. I, I mean, that's all right, but really, PB just a sandwich by itself? No, nothing to go with that. I mean, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Hey, how's the food? Um, you know, I, I can't really tell, so we'll go with a neutral answer. Yeah, it's, it's okay, you know? It's hard to mess up PB&J. Uh, it's okay. What do you mean it's okay? I programmed that recipe myself. I know what I'm doing. I used to be on television. Let me taste that. Damn. I see your point. Excuse me, do you mind if I sit here? No, no, please help yourself. She changed her hair. I'm Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Andrew. Griffin. Yes, I know. Don't you go by true? Uh, yeah. I, I guess our name is Drew. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Well, it's nice to meet you, Drew. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Dr. Marks. Oh, please, call me Elizabeth. Everybody else does. I don't really care for all the formalities. Can I ask you something? Sure. Why did you leave medical school? Wow, that's direct. It's a very good thing to be a doctor, Drew. Nothing personal, but there's a bit of a difference between a medical doctor and a PhD. You're right. You know what? I'm both. So it's okay. Whoops. Really? Yes, I was a pediatrician. Yeah. Did you like me? Yes, very much. Those little round heads, those little hands. Yes, I loved it very much. So where did you stop? A little girl died. Someone I got too close to. Oh God, I had a dream about her last night. Poor thing. Are you okay? I have a family on Earth. A large family. My mum, my dad, my sisters, and my little girl. Oh, yeah. I, um, I mean, thank God you're going to have a chance to help them. Do you believe in karma? Do you believe we pay for our sins? I mean, 
We believe that murder is the worst possible crime a man could commit. We killed our mother. Who, who judges us? I mean, am I doing the right thing? I mean, maybe death is the price for our sins. But can a whole race of people sin? And what about all the babies and the children? Ah, hi, Elizabeth. Do you need somebody to talk to? No, Charlie. Thank you, that's very kind of you, but I need to get back to the lab. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. That was uncalled for. I, I know this is low budget. I don't mean to be too critical, but couldn't they have afforded a microphone? Like just just one microphone. Was it was that too much? So the doctor is very um is having a crisis of morality ta asking us if you do something do you believe in karma like if you do something incredibly evil do you think you have to be punished for it It's probably nothing to worry about They didn't tell us to go anywhere. Maybe we should check out like another floor. Hmm? Is there like no elevator here? No, there's no elevator there. That's odd. Is there an elevator in this one? Okay, here's one. Uh, let's try level one. Hey, what about the quantum gate? I guess this is how we got here. Like, we took the quantum gate from Earth to here, I think is how it went. Oh, sorry, guy. This is off limits. You're not allowed back here. Why are you standing in front of giant typing? What is this? Is, is that the gate? Yeah, sure is. You know, I don't remember coming through here. How bizarre. Most people don't. We don't know why. Dr. Marx thinks it's a product of the profound frequency shift. She thinks it proves that all thought, or at least all memory, is frequency-based. Well, at least we know who this guy is. He works in the Quantum Gate room. What's the profound frequency shift? Yes, I do want to know about Ice-9. So, what's the profound frequency shift? Oh, it's Elizabeth's. Or her theory. It's uh, part quantum mechanics and part transcendental vision. Oh, it's the perfect synthesis of uh, intellect and intuition. <laughs> this guy sounds like he's got a bit of a crush. She is one of the great minds of our age. I'll tell you that right now. I am so in love with her, I would... <laughs> I knew it! Gosh, I have this recurring dream where... I, I don't think I want to know. I turn her... Anyway... <laughs> this is really amazing. It's so simple. It really shouldn't work at all. It shouldn't work at all? The gate shouldn't work? Oh, I understand completely all the physical processes the gate uses, but uh, 
I don't quite see how it works. Well, it shouldn't. It's almost as if the combination, or, or rather the, the physical placement of the parts, causes a quantum anomaly that allows the gate to work. Can you fit any more? Fit any more on the screen? Yes. I just don't really see how it works. Elizabeth sees it clearly. Sometimes I wonder, I wonder if we're really on AJ3905. Where the hell else would we be? How would we know? We could be in Trinidad. Dad. They could have told us we were going to 3905 and instead just sort of shipped us off to Sumatra. Well, I wonder about that sometimes. I wonder where we might really be. Oh, uh, listen, guy, you, you better get going. Um, you're not supposed to be in here. And there's some editing choices made in this game. This is off limits. We must oh. leave. Hello? Griffin, huh? Mr. Griffin, you're now on report. Oh, no. Great. On report? Oh, what a jerk. Are you security? Is security uniform like a tuxedo with a neck brace? All right, so that guy was telling us to doubt the things that were told. It kind of seems like a theme so far. Doubt what the people in authority are telling you. He doesn't understand how the quantum gate could work. It seems like it shouldn't work. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe they just say that we're somewhere that we're not. Who can say? All, all we have is the What's work. The problem? I don't think that would be a good idea. Come on, I just asked you over for a drink. What's the problem? Well, I'm an officer for one thing. Oh, God, you don't really think... Do you need something, soldier? Um... It, 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 is this the gate? Yeah. Is this the gate? Whatever it is, it's off limits. And you must leave. Oh, you've got cheetahs too. I must be interrupting something. Excuse me, did you drop this? Uh, what? Did you drop this money? No. Are you sure? Because I thought I just saw it fall out of your pants pocket. No, no, it's not mine. I keep my money in my wallet. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Because there's a lot of money here. Look, it's not mine. There's, there's uh, $300 here. Well, regardless, that is not my money. You're sure? Because this is a lot of money just to pass up. Look, it's not like I'm giving anything up. It was never mine to begin with. You're telling me you have no claim to this cash? That is correct, yes. We could split it? <laughs> no, I don't want to split that money with you. I, I don't want a single class worth of that money. I don't know who it belongs to, and I don't care. You may keep it or give it to somebody else. I mean, hell, you can burn it for all I care. Well, all right, I get the point. Um, oh, God, you know what? <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I just remembered this money did not fall out of your pants pocket. It's my money. I came over here and dropped it because I thought you had a really great ass and I really wanted to meet you. Can I buy you a latte? I've just come into a little cash and I'm feeling generous. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a good start to uh, to a, a last... Relationships are built on trust. I don't know if a, if a relationship that starts with a lie has a future, ma'am. Now, please, it's not my money. Please go away. Level 1 alert. Rescue Team A report immediately to the egress chamber. Andrews, Cranshaw, Griffin, and Hawkins report immediately to the egress chamber. What's going the on? egress? Oh, we're just automatically going to the egress chamber. I gotta run away from this woman who's trying to give me money. I don't want the money. out there are, are we leaving the survey team has been attacked on sector a12 the skivers down and we have fatalities it looks like we're dealing with a new type of bug and these fly now we're downloading the flight recorder playback simulation now 
Now we're gonna need first aid kit, O2 rafts, and body bags. Sergeant, who's your best driver? Griffin, you got the bubble on this one. Christ, I do not feel up to this. I need a wireframe. Damn, they would be on the other side of the island. We'll skirt the fault line and then crank up the sensors when we hit the south parameter B12. What are they doing way over there? Playback ready. Man, I do not want to watch this. Damn it, we're losing Chilo! Oh, that's some good audio. Jesus, what did the bugs do? Everybody, full side arms, lock and load. Mr. Griffin, we need you at the helm, please. Mr. Griffin, these things brought down a skiver. Now, sir. No shit, they brought down a skiver. To gyro sensitivity to a minimum. Hawkins, you're an auxiliary. Hey, no problem. Thank God it's Hawkins. All right, I think we're going into combat. This is not the simulator. This is the real thing. Outrigger attached. Skiver ready to depart. The PAI has calculated an optimal flight plan. It is logged and approved. You have a two-kilometer variant zone. Gotta kill some bugs. Display malfunction, huh? Can we trust what the VR is showing us? Alien proximity unacceptable. I have a lock on Dr. Mark Skiver, setting down ACAP. I show three fatalities, an injury and a clean survive. The injury and the survive are in the Skiver's EO2 station. Griffin, you stay on the cannon. Let's go, Hawkins. I'll take the living, you take the dead. Okay, so it hasn't actually been gameplay so far. I've got the two live ones. Alvarez's suit is breached, but it looks patchable. A second tier patch may prove sufficient. I'm saying two DOA. Go sign it, Dr. Marks. I am experiencing some interference with the location of Dr. Marks's body. I will continue filtering for location. VR feed will occur if I'm successful. In the meantime, please recover the locatable bodies. Oh. Get him down. Easy, easy. Dave, give him a stat scan. Watch his head. I'll get the helm. Damn it, you bastard! Did you know about the SD devices? Get off me! Michael, step down! Look, those men were euthanized! You killed them! This man needs medical help now! If you don't want to kill him, you'll back off! I, I said step down! Jesus, all right, let go of me. Self-destruct? They put self-destruct devices on our suits? Blood loss, shock. The wound is just below the fourth rib, on the left. Recommend 100 cc's meta-alkaloid. Can I get some medicine here, please? I said all right, goddammit, will you let go? Very odd. It seems to have been made by a steel instrument of some sort. Look, Alonzo and Tish were euthanized. The bugs didn't kill them. The UN did. Now, why weren't we told? The, the surface of this rock is highly toxic. Now, do you have any idea what lithium chloride does to a man? It was standard procedure. If it weren't for the SD, those men would still be in agony. Or would you rather have seen that? Hey, screw you, man. You could have told us. You don't go putting self-destruct devices on Enviro suits without telling people. Look, why don't you just get, look, look, screw this. I'm not fighting, all right? When I get back to the base, every swinging dick and Jane on the base is going to know about it. This is going to make Rangoon look like a friggin' lady's. You, Mr. Michaels, are in breach of contract. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to put you on notice. Jesus Christ, Maria, are you for real? Jesus, Sarge. Mr. Michaels, Beatrice International is hereby notifying you that you were in breach of your employment contract. Please do not call me by my first name. Notice is duly received. I am obligated to inform you that your contract is currently being in interpreted under the Indentured Forces Act. Failure to cure this breach. 
could result in substantial penalties. I take your meaning, Maria. Nicely done, Sergeant. Mr. Griffin, get us home, please. Now, can we get the hell out of here, please? Bodies are in the hold. Awesome, good noise right now. I think Saunders is expecting you. Okay, so our suits have kill switches on them, and they we were not told about that. Something you would want to know. Interesting choice of music. What's going on? Sir, the procedural manuals are quite plain in this regard. Oh, man. Oh, oh, will you? I'm telling you, the doc ran off. She did not become bug food in that race. Michaels, what a charmer. That guy certainly has a way with words. Colonel, the mission data transmission packet well, under nine. And the lieutenant, the consummate UN goon. I don't know what the pack tram said, but I was there, and I'm telling you that Dr. Marx took a walk. Lieutenant Andrews, how much oxygen did Dr. Marx have remaining at the time of the ambush? Pack tram indicates her O2 supply was at 87%. And how long might a person of Dr. Marx's size survive with 87% oxygen? Four, four and a half hours. Begin an immediate search within a 12-mile radius of the ambush site. <sighs> Sir, I must protest that this man is not a reliable source of information. Mr. Michael's opinions have nothing to do with my decision, Lieutenant. Dr. Marks is a critic. Criti Colonel, we have already lost a skipper to this new bug type. Now the odds of us... Lieutenant, according to my calculations, Dr. Marks has only two hours of oxygen remaining. You will commence an immediate search concluding only with either the return of the doctor herself or her remains. Am I understood? Sir, I would like to protest. Your yes. protests have been duly noted. Put the base on full alert. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Dismissed. Mr. Griffin, might I speak to you for a moment? What does he want? Uh, yes, sir. Certainly, sir. Mr. Griffin, you go by Drew, don't you? Why does everyone keep asking me that? Yes, sir. Do you mind if I call you Drew? Damn. What do I tell him? Okay, so... Lot, lots happening. Maybe we should just, you know, uh, review. Okay, so in the bug attack, Dr. Marks went missing. She's the one who talked to us in the cafeteria and asked us if we believe in karma. She's like the, as far as the science part of this mission goes, she's the head of it. Uh, she's gone missing, maybe dead. The military is going to go search for her because maybe she ran away. Maybe she's deserting, which could happen because she clearly felt very um, conflicted about what we're doing here. And felt that maybe some there was something evil about it, and maybe she just left. Um, so that seems to be the main thing that's happening right now. We don't know why this man, like the, the head of the military on the base, has called us here, but I guess there must be a reason. And he seems pretty friendly with us. So, yeah, let's just say that we don't mind if he calls us Drew. No, sir, not at all. Good. I have a cousin named Drew. Listen, I know that you and Michaels are friends. Oh, great. Just what I need. Um, sure. He's, he seems like an all right guy, if a bit abrasive. So, yeah, let's say we're friends. Yes, sir. 
We're very concerned about Private Michael's mental state. We have reason to believe that he may be unbalanced. Yeah, no kidding. What was your first clue? There's even some evidence to suggest that he may have contributed in some way to the skiver crash. I want to ask a favor of you. A favor? What's that, sir? I want you to keep an eye on Mr. Michaels. If he does or says anything strange, please let me know about it. I do not believe this. Look, what are we going to do? We're a military man, right? So sure. Yes, sir, I will. Good. If he does or says anything out of the ordinary, just let me know about it, won't you? Uh, yes, sir. Certainly, sir. Private, I want to warn you that Dr. Marin thinks the man may be a schizophrenic. Schizophrenic? Marvelous. I believe he's a subversive. Either way, he may prove to be very dangerous. I ask you to please be careful. Drew, thanks very much. I want to thank you for your assistance. It will be reflected in your service record. Dismissed. Can I trust this bastard or not? I wouldn't think that we could really trust many, any, really, anyone that we've been meeting so far. I guess uh, we can just choose to go where we want. Maybe we should just like we could maybe we could just like walk around and see if we encounter any conversations. Saunders is that guy's name. Access denied. We cannot go in there. Oh, yeah, I did notice someone mentioned that maybe we could look at information on the new bug type. Does it have anything here? No, it's just the same bug types that we've seen before, I think. Doesn't seem like it. So, a new bug type took down the last ship. And we're concerned about that. But, was the ship actually taken down? Saunders seems to think that Michaels may have had a hand. Well, let's go into the doctor's quarters. May have had a hand in, denied. Uh, in taking down the ship. And if Dr. Marx actually wanted to desert, maybe she could have done so herself. Maybe she had a part in it. Access denied. Everything's locked. So the mission, it, it's kind of hard to follow sometimes. The mission is that the Earth is dying... And we have to mine some kind of material from this world. And we can use that material to save Earth's ecosystem, Earth, the environment. It's time for lights out. Oh, it's time for lights out. I hope you all get a good night's sleep. All right. So that's why we're here. We're on this planet fighting bugs. Because they're killing, they're dangerous, and they're killing us. So we have to do it, so we can mine the material. Because we need it. Because Earth's entire, like the entire environment and atmosphere of Earth, is going to die in five years. So that's why we're here. Doctor Marx was talking about how she has a big, pl a big family on Earth. So, like the things that she's doing, she's doing for them. But she felt. Like, there were some big problems with what we're doing here on this planet, but she was vague. Lights out. Lights out, Phoenix Company. I hope you all get a good night's sleep. She was vague about why it was bad. And maybe she felt so bad about it that now she's just, uh, taken off. Possibly. We don't know for sure, but Michaels thinks that's what's happened. All right. Are we going to get... So if we're on drugs, we shouldn't get a dream sequence, right? Are you 
have any idea what lithium chloride does to a man. I need for you to come home. Dr. Marx took a walk. Everywhere, man. We're very concerned about Private Michael's mental Dr. state. Dr. Marx took a walk. Yes, yes, I will. I'd say that was a dream. Hey, Griffey, come on. Wake up. Time to go. Am I still dreaming? Hey, hey. What the hell do you think you're doing? Man, keep your voice down. Look, under the International Information Act, you have a right to access your personal file at any time. So we're going to have a little chat with the Beast, all right? The Beast? Hello, Privates Michaels and Griffin. How may I assist you? Ask for access to your personal file. Uh, may I have access to my personal records, please? Medical record. Search medications, please. Read line three. 300 cc's myodon and nitrate. Delivered daily. Close file. Open my personal file, please. Search medications. Read line five. 300 cc's myodon and nitrate. Delivered daily. You taking any medication? No. Me neither. Probably delivering it in the water supply. Do you believe me now? Okay, so we are being drugged. We don't, I don't know what it does. Apparently we think that it could be for anything. I don't know, man. I mean, look, that Mayadana stuff could be just about anything. Yeah, like what? Saltpeter reversant? Man, your head is up and locked. Wake up! Mr. Griffin! Griffin! Wake up, soldier! You need it in the briefing room immediately. Don't go back to sleep. Yes, Sergeant. Good. Get down there as soon as you can. Thanks, Sergeant. It's If you didn't tell me not to go back to sleep, I'll have to be honest, I would have just gone back to sleep. It's a... It's a bad habit. It's hard for me to get up in the morning. Um, I would have just closed my eyes and fell back asleep. To be to be completely honest. All right, back in the conference room. Let's get an update on the mission. Can I have your attention, please? Colonel Saunders? Yesterday, a survey flight led by Dr. Marx was attacked. I don't think the colonel is to be trusted. And the skipper was brought down. There have been two fatalities. Dr. Marks is missing. Dave, model display, please. Playback ready. We have a new bug type. This is the ComGem model from the VR mission recorders. This new class is considered very dangerous. The added mobility is obviously a factor as well. The VRDB has been updated with this new modeling data, so your heads-up displays will now reflect the proper image. These new bugs have been rated 89A for combat efficiency. 89A? Jesus. New directives from ComSend state, no skipper deployment when bug type F1 combatants are present. And finally, there have been some reports of VR display malfunction. Seems some bugs are being shown as humanoids. So everyone, please review your online manuals on EnviroSuit procedures and VR error addressing. That, ladies and gentlemen, will be all. Why does it do that? Mr. Griffin. You please be so kind as to join me in my quarters. Why do they have the multiple images on screen? Like with each line, there's another pic there's another video of the person. Anyway, the VR helmets may be showing the bugs as humanoids. 
lot of lot of glitches in these VR helmets. You'd think they would have this all ironed out in 50 years. I mean, 30. I guess 30 years from now. Yeah, 30 years. Ah, we're back in the church office. I need to speak to you concerning Private Michael. I'm very concerned he's spreading seditious sentiment. Seditious sentiment? Alliterative bastard, isn't he? I hope this isn't about last night. I appreciate your helping out like this. We won't go on and by the way, Private, I have the power to bestow field promotions, regardless of the originating corporation, at any time. How much does he really know? Has Michaels ever led you to believe that there might be a problem with the VR argumentation? Um, okay, so how much do we think he might know? We, well, I mean, he had, he had specifically in the briefing, he did tell to the, the Sarge that he didn't mention the top hats. He mentioned some things about the top hats that they were using in Belgium. That sounds about right. Did he try and convince you that the UN is lying about the nature of our mission here? I don't believe this. Is he just guessing? I don't, I mean, he has mentioned that to us. I don't think he ever said it out loud. So I don't think he would know that Michaels has mentioned. So I think we could say no at this. I think we can. No, sir. He never said anything like that. Did he ever say or do anything else that you think I should know about? Do I tell him about the pills or uh, breaking into the beast? So, would he know that we went into the computer room? Because you'd think that they could easily look that up, that up. He stole some pills? I mean, if he did, I don't think I caught that. Granted, a lot of this dialogue is chaotic and tends to be drowned out by music. I'm not sure if he stole pills. I don't think he... I think it's... We might assume that he... That the commander would know that we went into the computer room. So, probably we'll mention that. Yes, sir. Last night we broke into the main computer room. I see. All right. Thank you, Private. That's all. You are dismissed. Oh, Christ, I hope I did the right thing. If Saunders thinks I'm lying, I'm done for. I don't know what that damn Michaels has been up to. That son of a bitch is crazy. I never should have gotten mixed up with him. Damn it. What the hell am I gonna do? What's Saunders up to anyway? I'll talk to Michaels. That crazy bastard owes me. Well, I like... Convince the colonel that I didn't really have anything to do with this. I like this music with the lyrics and the wailing guitar. You better help me out of this, or I'm gonna kick his ass. But the, the, there's kind of a problem up there. The commander's watching us at all times. Michaels, we can't hide from him. Deleted. Jesus Christ! They, I don't believe this. They killed him. God damn it! They can't do that. What are they doing? They can't do that! Oh, man. Oh. I'm probably next. What am I gonna do? I better do something about those pills. If they find them in my room, I'm dead. Mail is waiting for you. Oh, great. I'm sure this is Jenny. The following correspondence has been digitally obscured at the request of the Hi, sender. Drew. How are you? I hope that you're doing well. I'm doing good. We're all good here. Uh, 
I miss you. I, um... Well, I'm worried about you. I hope that you're okay. They won't tell us anything, you know, where you are. My therapist, Barbara, says that it's either Chile or Budapest. I try not to think about it very much, <laughs> but I don't have very much luck. I, you're on my mind all the time, as a matter of fact. But you don't have that problem. <laughs> I still don't know what happened to me. I don't know what happened to us. I want you to know that I don't blame you. And I wish that you don't blame yourself. You know, <laughs> sometimes shit just happens. Your mom is really worried, but I'm doing my best to make her feel better. I know that We can never be together after this. But that doesn't mean that you can't come back and pick things up again. And I'm not saying that for you. Uh, I'm saying it for your mom and for me. It would help me a lot if you would come back home and start school again. I'm, I'm going to in a, a year or so. So, who knows, maybe I'll run into you on campus. I love you. I love you very much. And I'm gonna miss you. Goodbye, Drew. Could you um, turn off the tape? I'm finished. Hmm. So great. Now what am I gonna do? If Saunders catches me with these pills, I'm a dead man. I guess I might as well take the damn things. So did we abruptly join the military because we couldn't face her? At CC's my mother. Delivered daily. We've killed her. I want to create. I want that. We have a new bug type. I want to have a baby. Dr. Marx took a walk. All aspects of this operation are being governed Jenny, by the international... Keep trying to convince you that the UN is lying. Please don't ever leave me. I can't be without you. Level 1 alert. All combat troops to the egress chamber. Oh, Jesus. Level 1 alert. Oh, Jesus, there's a raid. All able-bodied troops oh, to the egress oh, chamber. I do not want to go Full-scale assault Christ. in progress. Oh, Jesus. All combat bugs. troops to the egress chamber immediately. Oh, damn it. Oh, oh, I'm scared. I wish Michaels was here. Oh, damn. Oh, Jimmy, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I deserve this. I know I deserve this. I never should have come here. I'm so scared. <laughs> sometimes this is the best game, and sometimes it's the worst. I wish our guy could put a little emotion in his voice. It's just, it's just a little bit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, man. Oh, no. I'm so scared. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's gameplay. Gameplay's actually happening. Fire. You have to fight the flying bugs. Fire. Fire. So behind two zero. I like how we saw the bug like come out of her mouth 
in the dream. It was a nice effect. So, we probably joined the military uh, abruptly because we maybe we felt guilty for what happened to, to her. Like, we just couldn't face her after whatever it was that happened. We had to get away from our old life. So we went, joined the military, and went through the gate to get as far away as possible, as humanly possible. I guess? Is I think what our motivation is? Foe behind. Three, five, zero. Fire. Fire. Griffin. T. Eight. Fire. 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 Uh oh. VR is experiencing difficulty. I mean, they can't experience difficulty now. This is the bat the worst time to be for it to be experiencing difficulty. Six. Like surrounded by bugs and trying to think about the guilt we feel for both our girlfriend and that Michaels is dead, maybe because of what we said. Fire. We didn't make it we didn't make things better at all coming out here. We only made things worse. We never we did not find the solution to our problems out here on this alien planet. Fire. We tried to escape our problems, only Fire. to find that we could never get away from them, be them to begin with. Our problems stuck with us. Even all the way out here. And these bugs don't care about our mental state. They don't care about our past trauma. Only to give us new trauma, now. And our VR headset keeps experiencing difficulty. Why do we even use these VR headsets? <laughs> They're so bad. Suit I think... Oh my god. Oh. Oh. What? Oh. I have to choose how to kill myself? Your enviro suit oh, has been happened? breached. Oh shit. Oh shit, I've been hit. Prior to euthanization, oh, shit, your no. employment contract entitles you to make peace with the universe and or God as you perceive he she or it to be. No, no. Please choose the last rights appropriate for your beliefs. I'm sorry, we are currently unable to process your request. Oh, thank God. Proceeding with default settings. Euthanasia will occur in 15 seconds. Oh, no! No, no. Uh, uh, no, no, turn it off. No, God damn it, no! Oh, I don't want to die. Turn this thing off! Get me out of here! I don't want to die! Stop it! Stop it! No! No! Oh, my God. Michaels was right. They're human. And that is Quantum Gate. It's quite a it's quite a dramatic ending. Okay, so that's our VR head helmet came off in the end, and we saw the planet for what it really was. It wasn't some sort of desolate environment crawling with bugs. No, they were half dressed half dressed ladies with wings on this green verdant plane. We were killing them the whole time. Killing the indigenous people of this land to take their resources because we need them to save our planet. And that's why Dr. Marx was feeling so guilty because she knew the truth and she was asking, is it worth doing such evil to save ourselves? What is, what is the proper and good thing to do? But of course, the powers that be could not let us know the truth of things because 
otherwise we would not fight for them and why we would just say well no i can't kill these people they look like they look like me they're attractive humans and makes it that makes it wrong to kill them if they were ugly bug aliens it would be completely okay but no, I that's ha I, I have the hots for this alien lady. I cannot kill her. If only poor Michaels was alive to see the truth of things. I guess that means I had to lose that gameplay segment, right? I like it didn't seem like it was winnable because there were so many bugs coming at me, and I guess that's why because you have to lose so you get defeated and your your VR heads your VR helmet comes off and you see who you're really fighting i did like the blue screen of death that was that was a pretty good joke about the program that's about to euthanize you crashing now what something i do know of is that this game is actually half of a story because they're, they they were making like a full game but the publisher wanted them to release something before it was done so they released this which is actually half of it and actually Quantum Gate 2 came out the next year finishing the story so this game actually has a sequel you wouldn't think so this is the sort of game that you would look at and say okay they probably never were able to follow up on this right that's usually how this goes but no they actually released a sequel to this That was something. That was a roller coaster ride. That was just constantly jabbing you with dialogue and noise. This is fictitious. There's nothing about it that was real. Okay. Well. Ah, uh, oh man, that was. Well. It says no one dreams here. Again, I don't know if that was a working title or a title that was used in other regions, maybe. Because the game's called Quantum Break. You know, apparently this game was released on the PlayStation and the Saturn. I don't think it was released in the US. Like, maybe it was a European release? Because apparently it's on that. On those. Um, but... I it's it seems it doesn't seem like a game that would have been released on the consoles but it does definitely seem like something that would have been released on Windows 3.1 like i said sometimes when you want to see the early days of interactive movies and that sort of game style you dig down into the Windows 3.1 to get to the real good stuff the real good stuff but before we go, I think what we're going to need to do... Hold on a moment. I think what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take a look at the manual and see if we can get any explanations here. Quantum Gate, the saga begins in an interactive movie by Greg Roach. All right, what does it have to say? Well, it talks about the installation. It talks about virtual cinema. What is virtual cinema? It says it's a high-performance software engine decides specifically to play digital video and multimedia from a CD-ROM. It creates a story world where you are the central character. The things you need to know are folded into character interaction exploration. Most of the time, you have the freedom to move around as you wish. That is not true. Manual. That is a lie. You, most of the time, you do not have the power to move around as you wish. That is, this is not true. A virtual cinema movie is presented to you in three layers. First, physical environment, the world, layered over this, digital video. 
I love this sentence. The language of film is exploded out over the entire screen area. Exploding. This is where you interact with the characters and control how the story unfolds. Each person you encounter has a unique abstracted background that expresses your feelings about the character. These can change over time. The third layer shows you your thoughts, memories, and fantasies, everything that goes on inside your head. Earth, 2057, the inability of the world's industrial nations to reach a unified solution to environmental management over the last five decades has finally borne bitter fruit. The world governments, using a highly advanced simulation program called Earth-5, have predicted that the environment has only five years before an irreversible decline begins. The Eden Initiative has begun to attempt to reverse the death of the planet. The key to this operation is a rare mineral, iridium oxide, found in abundance on planet AJ-3905, a hostile world accessible only through the Quantum Gate. You are Drew Griffin, a newly enlisted corporate soldier. Enjoy your journey. Here is a map of one of the floors. It says the Eden Initiative, an all-world initiative utilizing the joint resources of both governmental and corporate multinational entities. Government, corporation, together, combined, saving the planet. Its goal is to allow Earth's leaders time to find a viable solution before the irreversible death of the planet. And this is... its I think it's lyrics of a song. This I don't know if... Maybe this is the song that we hear when we're walking down the hallways uh, that one, at that one point. Like we hear a song with lyrics. Maybe it's this. I'm not sure about that. It tells us how to play. Different quadrants allow for navigation throughout space. The cursor will guide you and will indicate your choices. You can get close-ups, interface, memory, sound, conversation. It says, oh, clicking on the video windows that appear in corners let you access Drew's memories and thoughts. I could, So I could click on those? Like, just when random things would appear in the corner? Could I have clicked on those? Hmm. I'm not... I don't know? Maybe. International Indentured Forces Act, first enacted in 2049, gives the UN extremely broad powers over the disposition and treatment of corporate forces under UN control, can only be implemented in operations critical to global well-being, and therefore has only been used only a few times. Militerm, the centralized UN military telecommunications network, current implemented using spectrostone display technology. Transmission difficulties with Earth, see Quantum Gate, preclude television broadcasts, both normal and linear. I don't know, why is that even in the game at all? Why is the bit about Spectrostone even in there if you can't use it? I don't know. The Shiver is the latest generation magneto-optical lift vehicle. So that's the ship that we were using. If you were having trouble hearing what they were calling that, it's called the Shiver. Bug type. Given our knowledge of insect populations on Earth, several thousand species might inhabit AJ-3905. The Quantum Gate, a device created by Dr. Elizabeth Marx that allows access to, to the parallel reality frequencies that surround our own. That one guy was questioning whether the Quantum Gate could actually be real, and did it actually take us to planet AJ-3905? Clearly it did, but the whole theme of this game was whether or not you can trust what the authority is telling you, which in the end, we could not. We could not trust that. Private Michaels, important character in the game, doesn't actually tell us anything about it, about him, just repeats that why don't you go flatline line over. Fusion washing, a technique developed by Dr. V. Rampajani uh, for processing iridium oxide. Lithium dioxide, the principal component of the atmosphere of AJ3905, highly corrosive and toxic, deadly to humans. Dave, digital, actor, virtual environment. Dave. When those are the artificial people. 
It's a good acronym. Virtual reality augmentation, a battlefield technology which enhances the soldier's ability to fight effectively using both immersion VR and direct cerebral transmission technology. So the entire purpose of the VR helmet was just not just to show you fake images. That seems to be the entire reason that we had that. I don't think there was any other reason to have the the headset. I guess that was all. It didn't seem like it actually helped us at all until we find out the truth at the end. AJ3905, a medium-sized Class A planet with huge amounts of iridium oxide, mastery of AJ3905 is critical to the success of the Eden Initiative. Iridium oxide, mineral used in fusion washing to create water, oxygen, and ozone, extremely rare on Earth, abundant on AJ3905. Okay, so it seems like the idea was that we had to mine this iridium oxide, we had to harvest it, and then we would go through this process of uh, fusion washing it. And by doing that, we would be able to create water, oxygen, and ozone on Earth, restoring the environment. It seems like what the plan was. So, but we couldn't get that. We couldn't get the iridium oxide with those pesky indigenous people in the way. So. Got to gotta kill them all, as we do. Artificial person, a software robot, top hat, Pacific Image Data, 840 AV, virtual reality, light armored personal headgear, CVR augmentation. On the top, it says, in, t- in 2023, to reflect their changing role in the global community, the UN's charter was greatly expanded to include the military and political means for effectively maintaining a world government. As I mentioned... Fears at the time that the UN would become the global government, which that didn't happen. 2057, EMO, Environment Emergency Management Office. That's that's a pretty good one. That's a a pretty good acronym. It's the EMO. Spectrostone, a large-scale display technology built into the construction materials used throughout most of the base, can alter its surface characteristics. I don't think that ever really comes up, though. Oh, to create highly realistic real-time emulation of natural and fabricated textures and vistas. can also be used as a video display device. So I guess everything that we see in the station is made of spectrostone, and then it can just change to, change to look like whatever you want it to look like, I guess is the idea. Okay, here's the cast, and at the top it says, written and directed by Greg Roach. At the bottom it says, director, playwright, actor, and novelist, Greg Roach is considered one of the world's leading interactive filmmakers. Uh, They also mention, like at the beginning of this, uh, an interactive movie by Greg Roach. So it does seem to be like they're pushing him as like the, um, the auteur behind this project uh, is the feeling I get from this. I looked him up. He's, he's done a few projects. Um, it seems like the last thing he was involved in, as far as video games goes, uh, at least according to IMDb, was in 2010, he was the writer of Red Steel 2. But it doesn't seem like he's been involved in video games since then. It doesn't seem like. But, uh... Was he one of the world's leading interactive filmmakers? I I don't know. I, I mean, I don't I don't want to automatically say he wasn't, but I mean, I don't know for sure. Could look more into what sort of interactive films he might have been making at the time. Let's talk about Hyperbole Studios. It's an interactive multimedia production studio. It was founded by Greg Roach in 1990, so he was the founder of the studio. The first relief was the CD-ROM, The Madness of Roland, the first original interactive multimedia novel. In addition, they they produced the world's first narrative interactive film, The Wrong Side of Town, best of show at the first QuickTime Film Festival, and Big Warm Bear Arms, best of show QuickTime Movie Festival. These works, along with several others, will appear on Hyperbole Studios' next CD-ROM portals, a collective collection of, inter- of original interactive films also distributed by Media Vision. Hyperbole Studios is currently in production for Quantum Gate 2, the virtual cinema sequel to Quantum Gate. Hmm. The world's first narrative interactive film? I, 
this was 1993, this game, so a few years before that, I guess it could be possible that it would have been the first, considering the time period. I don't know that for sure, but it's it could be possible. That's the end of this manual. Well, oh man, that was an adventure, that was an experience, but I guess we do need to go through it again, don't we? Because there were different choices to make, and we do need to find out if we can save Michaels. I don't know if there are any other choices you can do. Like, I don't, I feel like the other choices you could make, I don't know if it would change anything. Like, I feel like the only thing that we might possibly have been able to change would have been Michael's death. I don't feel like we had the power to change anything else. But that's something that we will be doing next time, because I don't think the human brain is capable of absorbing two playthroughs of No One Dreams Here in a row. It would just be too much. It would melt your brain, just like the VR and the drugs do. And then, of course, we will have to see how the the raging climax of this story at some point after we're done with this one. But that has been our, our first playthrough of Quantum Gate, the saga of begins an early interactive narrative production for windows 3.1. And that is, I'm going to have some weird dreams tonight. I'm going to have some weird dreams. I hope you do too. I'll see you next time.